morning everyone happy monday another week hopefully you enjoyed yesterday's video um what were we making yesterday oh we were doing the coin and pearl pendants so a really nice way to start um weaving using uh some very simple uh techniques and materials and um we had lots of you joining us and hopefully you are making them as well. Don't forget to join the Totally Handmade Facebook group where you can actually pop up pictures of what you've been making. I know several of you are sharing pictures from the projects that we've been doing week by week. Uh, morning Anne, morning Natalie, hi Paula. Um, so it's um, a really nice way to share your inspiration. Some of you are doing lovely little takes on the patterns yourself um, and learning learning lots of new techniques, which is really good. Um, morning Debbie, hi. Hi Marie, hi Chris. So today we're going to be making some rings. Hi, morning Camille. Are you keeping well? Yes, I am fine, thank you. How are you? Uh, morning Jane. Hi Marion. Sunny here in Ireland. Yeah, we've got the sun back today as well. Yesterday was so cold. I couldn't believe we were sunbathing in the garden on Saturday. And yesterday we had our winter coats back out. We were on a dog walk. We were absolutely freezing. Um, morning, Margaret. Hi, Jane. Hi, Jan, Paula. So these are the rings that we're going to be making today. So we are learning to create our own beaded band using size 11 seed beads. And we're going to pop a crystal in the middle. So it's a really nice way um, if anyone has hypersensitive skin, can't wear costume jewellery or metals, um, it's a really great way to be able to make your own rings and wear them. And obviously you've got the pride of making it yourself. Um, hi Sadie, hi Anne, morning Maureen, Maureen, lovely. I've got lots of you on already. Over 60 of you already. We've only been going for a few minutes. Hi, Anna. Thanks again for these mornings. Glad you're sounding better. Oh, yeah, Anna, I'm doing well. I think they were ploughing some of the fields. We noticed... Um Yesterday we had to take um, my stepdaughter back to her mum's and we noticed that a lot of the crops in the fields have gone. So I think that was my few days of hay fever, but I'm doing okay now. Um, morning Priscilla from South Africa. Good morning, hope you're all well over there. Hi Judith, morning mum. Hi Di and Sue, lovely. Right, I've got so many of you on, I think we are just gonna crack on. Um, Sue says, um, lovely but very windy day, yet yeah, Margaret has already sent away for her crystals. Amazing. So I'm using the Totally Beads coin crystals today and they are stunning. Now, I have popped a link in the description of the video. There isn't a free PDF today because this is one of my projects. Uh, Kitty and I are kind of running out of projects. We've been doing this now for about six weeks. I think this is week six we're going into. <clears throat> Me saying I'm, I'm feeling well and I'm going to get croaky again, aren't I? Um, about six weeks that so we have given you a PDF pattern um, pretty much every day, I think. Um, and now we are branching into some of my patterns that I've been using. I haven't even yet managed to put a project together for it. Um, and we've also had a couple of weeks of TV shows. I'm getting ready for TV shows for Totally Beads on Wednesday morning at nine o'clock on Create and Craft TV. So you can join me then. Oh, Maria, morning from Malta. Lovely to see you again. Hope you're all doing well. Um, so these coin crystals, we have put a link in the description of the video um, because you can actually buy sets. So Kitty has used these before to make beautiful necklaces as you can see they're graduated so they start from a smaller crystal up to larger and then back down again so they are perfect for necklaces so there um, is a kit that you can buy for just five pounds and you will get your strand of crystals this is the color I'm going to use today I'm all in black today, so I thought I'd go uh, with the grey ones. Um, there are some beautiful finishes to them. So I'm going to show you my take on these beads. I thought they would be beautiful for rings. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, I haven't got the mermaid pink one here, which I think is my favourite. It's beautiful. But as you can see, they're double-sided with a lot of them as well. So you can actually get... Um, Two rings for the price of one, really, because I'm going to show you how we can flip it even once it's created. Um, lovely. I've got loads of you on. I'm going to turn you down and we'll get going. Um, let me just flip the camera. <clears throat> okay, so beaded rings. So I'm going to use the coin crystals. Now, what you can actually do, just sit it on your finger and you can decide what size of the, the coins you want to use. So if you're not too much of a statement piece wearer, uh, you can go for the smaller ones. And obviously, as you graduate through your strand, you can see that they go up to a really large size as well. I think the largest 
might even be a 16 mil. I've got a ruler here somewhere. Hang on. I'll tell you exactly what sizes they are. So the largest one, oh, is a 20. So it's two centimetres, 20 mil. And then the smallest one, I think is probably amazing, is a 10. Okay, so 10 all the way up to 20, so a great size. Um, and what I'm going to do is use one of them as a feature. So when you get them, you can pop them on your hand and just see, look at the colours of these. They are just stunning. And you'll be able to flip them as well. So you'll get uh, two rings for the price of one, really. Um, so these kits for your necklaces are £5 today down from £6. Um, and obviously I'm just going to use one bead to make a ring. So your um, strands, if you're going to make rings out of them, maybe to sell um, or to gift Christmases and birthdays and things like that, they'd be fabulous for. Um, then as you can see, you're going to make so many. So this is the ring we're going to be making. Now, this is actually with a Swarovski crystal. This is one that I have made um, a good few years ago. Um, I wear it quite a lot, so it's lasted me really well. We're going to make our own beaded band and then we're going to use a feature crystal in the middle. So today, obviously, we're going to do a coin, whereas this is a rectangular one. If you have things like semi-precious stones that are quite large, um, you want to make a real feature out of them, then this is a great way to do it. And we're going to create this band around the outside so that they sit. Now, you can actually flip them. So if you do have anything that is double-sided, like our coins, you can just rotate that around, which is why I've done a bit of a looser bale in the middle to hold the crystal, because you can flip it so you can get a different finish. Now, I'm going to use the size 11. These are gold-lined black diamond. Um, they're Toho Seed Beads from Totally Beads. So it's going to match my um, coin crystal beautifully. I'm just going to cut off a crystal from here. I don't want to go too, too big. I can't decide whether to do this one or this one. Let's have a little look. Let's see. I'll probably wear it on this finger. So let's take that one off. See, I think that's probably a little bit too big for me. It's going to get in the way. Take some of that strand off. So you can, oh, that's nice, isn't it? That's going to be good. And you can see the coin crystals. Let me clean this off. So you don't have my fingerprints all over it. They have a beautiful, almost sunburst cut in the middle. So when you wear these, you are going to get the most fantastic bit of bling. Okay, let's go for this one. So I've got my um, needle and thread already going. I have kept it on the spool. So I've got about an arm span, generous arm span. So I don't normally work with more than that. And we're going to start with just four of our seed beads. Let me get some of this lighting right for you. Okay, so I'm going to pick up four seed beads, like so, and then I'm going to bring them down just past my tail, about an arm span. You do need quite a lot of thread for these because we are going to weave in and out several times. And I'm going to go back through my first two seed beads. Now you'll see, as I normally do, I've got my... Um, thread suspended in between my fingers. Debbie's saying the Toho name sounds interesting. It's beautiful, isn't it? What is it? Gold lined black diamond. I thought that'd be perfect for today. Okay, so I've gone through my first two again. And when I pull these tightly, it's going to sit two of my beads on my working thread and two of them are just going to protrude out to the side like this. So it's given me a little square. Uh, Camille says, I just finished the last three of the Swarovski ones yesterday from your show ages ago. Oh, amazing. Um, isn't it funny that we find all these things in our cupboards at the moment we haven't been using? Okay, so this is going to start to create my band. My band is going to be two beads in thickness. So to straighten these up, I'm going to take my needle through those outer two beads again. And you'll see that that will just line them up nicely. As I'm pulling it through, you can see my tension is going to be a little bit off. So I'm actually going to hold these beads together and pull that through which will neaten up that tension and then I'm going to run through the inside two again so they are the two that are um, still on my working thread and pull that through and we've got a nice neater tighter square now as we start going these beads will line up so don't worry if they're not perfect just now um 
Tinkerella, wow, that's a good name, Tinkerella Pixie. Uh, where can we get the kit? So I have put a description in the video. If you click on that, that's gonna take you to the Totally Beads website. And in the section today, there's no PDF pattern, but you'll be able to watch this video back as your tutorial. Hopefully it's gonna be clear enough for you to see and follow. And you will be able to get your coin necklace um, and earring kit. All you need to do is add in your seed beads. And they're normally £6 a set, but they're going to be £5 today. You will find the coin beads on the website as well. And I think they've put a link to the seed beads on the homepage too. So now we're going to create the length of our band. So I'm going to pick up two seed beads. And I'm going to, so you can see my thread is exiting from my left hand bead. Picking up two, I'm going to go through my right hand bead and only one of them. So I'm going to ignore those first two bottom seed beads. And again, hold it in your fingers, the attention's tight, and it will sit these two beads on top of my previous two, like so. Now I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna cross over to the left-hand side again. So I want to go up these two far beads. Now, if you find it hard to get your needle in, you can rotate your work in your hand. I'm crossing my thread over. So now my further away beads have become my closer beads and I can pop up because you could see, I could see my thread path easily. I could see those beads. And when I pull this tightly, you will see that my thread will cross over from the two beads left and right, like so, but it pretty much disappears, okay? You can see it ever so slightly here, and that's why using a thread color that is going to match your seed beads is really important. Or if you wanna go a bit funky, you could do something that's completely contrasting. Um, a black one would look nice in here because then it's gonna tie in with the crystal that I'm gonna use, but it's entirely up to you. Now, this thread path is going to not only reinforce our band, but it's also gonna straighten up our beads, okay? And this is all I'm gonna repeat time and time again until we get the length of band that we need. So two seed beads, my thread is exiting from the left, picking up two seed beads, only going down one bead, pulling that in and it will give me my next two beads. And I want to go through these ones on the far side, but it's hard sometimes to get in. So I just take my work, flip it over. You can see I'm crossing that thread there as well. If you flip it over, um, you're actually gonna bring these beads that you need to go through closer to you. And now I can hold it all in place and I can see them really easily. So just try to make it easy for yourself. Don't make it hard. And you'll see if I flip that around in a moment, that thread is just gonna pass in between those beads, straighten them all up nice and neatly, and I can move it back again. So I'm always working on the edge closest to me. Sorry, Sarah, I missed the start of these size eights. These are size 11 seed beads, Jen. Um, you could use any size of seed bead for this. If you want a thicker band and you're not great with working with smaller beads, by all means, you can go for um, a size eight or a size six even. It's up to you, depending on how big you want it. Um, so if your hands are, if your fingers and your hands are quite large, um, now my mum gets really bad, I'm sure she won't mind me saying, sorry mum, um, my mum, um, because of the medication she takes and everything, gets quite swollen hands, so a lot of her rings that she has, she can't actually wear sometimes if she's having a bit of a flare-up, she suffers with arthritis, so something like this, if you need a bigger strap, um, you need a bigger band for your, um, for your fingers, it's a really nice way to be able to make jewellery that is going to fit you if you can't necessarily find it in the shops, which is really lovely. Um, so you can see now we're getting quite a strong straight finish. Don't worry about your first two because when we come back and we finish our band, they will straighten up. You can see we're getting this really nice sort of ladder effect with our seed beads. Um, so I think I'm catching up with most of your comments. Let me know if you've got any questions. I can see you're all replying to each other as well, which is fantastic. Um, I will try and keep an eye. So we're just going to do this until I get um, a length of the band that will go about three quarters of the way around my finger. And then we're gonna start adding on our crystal. Now you can add your crystal on at any point, so I won't go the whole way because I don't wanna be too, too long for you. Um, but as you can see, it's just pattern repeat. And the more beadwork you get, 
the easier it is because you've got something more to hold on to, your tension's getting great, a little bit easier as we go. As you know, your first couple of rows with seed bead work and weaving is always a little bit trickier, but it's just pat and repeat and you'll see each time I'm flipping it over, keeping that thread in place and going up two beads. So just to confirm, we're adding two beads, going down only one, flipping it over and going up two. And what it's doing each time is attaching our previous row to the current row. And it's giving us this really lovely band. Good morning, everyone. Got lots of you on. Um, has anyone been making the projects from previous videos? Um, if you do share the video, you know, it'll pop up onto your own homepage and you can use that as a bit of a bookmark. Um, so if there's any that you really want to, for example, if you're buying the coin crystals today, um, once you get them in the post, if you think you might struggle to find this video again, just give the video a little share and that will pop up onto your own personal homepage and then you'll be able to find it. But just go to the Totally Beads Facebook page and you can scroll through all of our posts. There are about, goodness, six weeks worth of these videos now. And as you can see, this is taking shape really quickly, okay? And then just keep on measuring it up against your finger. So I'm gonna wear this on my um, ring finger. So just keep on holding it on. You can see I've got about half of my band um, that I need to make. So let's keep on going a little bit and then we'll add on our crystals. Everyone's saying good morning to Kitty. Morning, Kitty. Hope you're okay. So Kitty is going to be back on Wednesday. So tomorrow I'm going to be making adjustable memory wire bracelets. Um, I'm going to show you them at the end of this video. Um, and we're going to use a whole host of beads. So you will need a size 8 0.8 millimeter memory wire so it's nice and thick because we need it to hold its shape um, you'll be able to get that on the totally beads website today and then i'm just going to use a whole host of beads so you could use your leftover beads from your cupboards um, i've also got coin beads that i'm going to add so your leftovers if you're making these rings um, seed beads all sorts of things you can add anything on so long as the bead will fit onto the memory wire you can add it into your bangle and then it'll be a nice way to make a matching bracelet for the rings that you're gonna do from today. Okay, so I think that's probably enough. You've got the gist of the band. So now we're gonna start adding on our crystal. Now, the count is gonna be slightly different for everybody, depending on the size of crystal that you're going to use. So obviously I've got my round one here. What I want to do from my band is I want to add the right amount of bead. So as I've said before, you could use any size of bead, any shape of bead, so long as it has a hole running through the middle of it. So you can see through my crystal bead here. On these ones, you can normally see through one side of them. Again, if you use a thread that is colour matching, whoop, colour matching, it's not going to highlight that too much. And on one side, of course, I'm not going to see it at all. So what you want to do is sit your bead halfway through your band. So my hole is running top to bottom. Sit the band just at the edge in the middle of your crystal and you want to add enough seed beads to get to the base here where we're going to meet the hole. So trial and error, um, depending on the bead that you are using, of course, your count is all going to be different. But I want to show you so that you can do this with any of the beads you've got in your collection. So you can see here that's going to be the perfect amount. OK, I've got my crystal, um, sorry, my uh, band sat in the middle of my crystal and these beads are going to take me all the way to the base. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and I'm gonna add on my crystal. So through to the top of my crystal, and I'm gonna add on seven again, so it's matching to the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I want to attach it to the band, okay? So I'm now gonna come through two of my beads down here. So this is attaching my crystal onto the band, and then I'm going to come back up. So again, I'm crossing over and coming through the two at the base. So I've crossed over through two at the top and now I'm crossing over two at the bottom. And as you can see, that's now going to sit really beautifully around my crystal. 
okay? So we want to navigate so that we can finish it off and go on the other side. But firstly, can you see that I've got a little gap here? Now it's silly little things like this that will give you a really professional finish. If I show you on my finished piece, I just added one extra bead just to top off that band so that it looks nice and it doesn't look incomplete. So make sure that doesn't cross over like mine has. I'm just gonna pick up one bead and I'm gonna enter it into here. So I'm exiting from the top here. I'm gonna pick up one bead. Now, did I attach it onto the top two? Yeah, I did. I'm gonna come through my first bead of my connector band to my crystal. I'm going to pick up one seed bead and I'm gonna go through the first band on the connector here as well. And again, so that I'm connecting them on and I'm connecting it to the band, I'm also gonna come down one. And when I pull this tightly, you can see that bead is now gonna lock into place and just give us a nice little tip to the edge. Now I'm gonna pull it tightly. You could see I had a little gap in my um, threads there. So pulling it nice and tightly. And of course, what I'm doing by going through all of these beads again, each time I'm just connecting it to the band, I'm always reinforcing it, which with these is really important. Now I want to be able to finish off the other side of my crystal. So I'm gonna go through my thread path, through all of these beads. There's lots of sort of um, going back around and connecting uh, with these, which is good because it's gonna give you extra strength all the time. I'm going to cross over through my last bead here and then I'm going to come back through my crystal and we'll add our seven beads on the other side. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now it's going to match the top and the bottom of my previous sides. Okay, but as you can see, we've got no band to connect it onto because we're coming all the way around. So what I'm gonna do now is repeat the step that we did at the very beginning. So I'm gonna add on four beads. Ooh, one extra, I think. One, two, three, four. And we will create our little band just like we did at the beginning. So I've added on four beads. I'm gonna go back through my first two. And this will give me the start of my band on the other side, okay? And as you can see, I can now slide this down. It's just like adding a little stopper bead, like we would. That will allow me to create my double band width for this side of our crystal. Just making sure I've still got seven in here. Looks a little bit shorter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, I've still got seven, we're good. Crossing through the outside two of my band, and that will take me so that I can add the top connector to my crystal. Okay, so adding on another seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this will go down through the crystal. Now that I have all of the supporting band around the outside of my crystal, we can fill in a couple of gaps. Now I know I haven't added my extra one in here yet, which we will. And as you can see, it just gives you a bit more of a complete finish, doesn't it? On this side, we've got a little gap. On this side, it pulled it all in nicely and gave me that neat finish. But as you can see, we've also got a gap up at the top here and at the bottom. And we want to fill that as well. So I'm going to pick up one seed bead and I'm going to run through all the way around the outside of my crystal. Now I know it seems like you're going here, there and everywhere. Can you see that's popped in there? But what this is also doing is reinforcing it. Now obviously it's going to be used a lot. Um, it's gonna be um, put on and off your hand a lot. It's going to be put under some stress because when you're carrying things, I don't know, it might be like a shopping bag or you know, your hands are gonna do a lot of work. So this is going to have quite a lot of stress on it. So what you want to do is make sure that it's going to be nice and strong because you don't want it breaking. So I'm just crossing over through that bead that we added. I'm also gonna work all the way up through. Let me just pinch this so it opens up a little bit. All the way up through the top of our crystal. You can do it in one, in one pass. If you like just going through individual beads or you like doing one at a time, that's absolutely fine. It's whatever's gonna be easy for you. And we want to add in our bead here as well. So I'm going to pick up this bead that will fill the gap and we'll go all the way around. So can you see now that's given me a complete closed circle, okay? And then I also want to, because we added this bead and it's not connected here, 
I want to connect it back on, okay? So we will go around again. But this time, now that we are at the starting side of our band, I can actually add on that finishing bead in a second. I just want to navigate all the way over. So I'm going to strengthen up this band as well. Cross over through here. Cross over through the band itself. Pulling this nice and tight. So as you can see, there's lots of, if I flip this around, I hope I won't confuse you, um, lots of crossing over and working through our previous steps, but it's just neatening and tidying it all the time. Now we're at the point where we have our extra bead that we added on and I can cross over through so that it connects to the complete circle. And now you can see we've got all of those beads running all the way along, really nice, neat finish. And I know I've got a great thread path in here as well and that it's super tight, okay? Which is gonna give us a great finish. Now it's tight around the bead, but because I've left it reasonably loose, this is going to give me that flippability. So now on my ring, I can actually have the darker side of my crystal or I can rotate that round and I can have the clear side as well. So if you're going for your coin crystals and you have something like the mermaid, um, I think it's called mermaid pink, or look at these ones. So I could wear this with a blue or green outfit, but if you flip it over, you've got the amazing Aurora Borealis finish in there as well. So it's really, really lovely. Um, I hope... Everyone is getting their questions answered. I think Doris is asking if you could add like a little um, spacer bead in here as well. You could add anything into these. Once you know the, the basics of the technique and you have um, the basics of the technique and you've got your tension really nice and tight, you can add any beads into these and you can give it a really beautiful finish. So I'm showing you the technique and my sort of pattern. You can then do your little take on it. So these little beads here, you could even add a little bicone into them. You could do anything. So to get to the side of the band that we now want to finish, Good grief, I have hundreds of you on here. I am so sorry, I am not keeping up with your comments. <laughs> but I think Kitty is still on here. I think you guys are answering each other as well. I hope you're having a nice little interaction on this Monday. So I've got to the end here. We're just going to add that little bead into the middle as well. So you want to be coming up out of the bead. So at the moment, I'm coming down through them. So I'm going to go to the band. I'm going to turn around. So my, cir my circular crystal in the middle here, I've gone over about three times okay so I know that's super strong I'm gonna wear this with confidence now we're just gonna add this final little bead before we start adding on our um, rest of the band so I've come up so I'm facing towards my crystal I'm gonna pick up my extra bead oh no wait a minute I want to come out of that first one don't I just make sure you've got that symmetry so you're doing the same thing on both sides coming up out of my first seed bead Picking up a seed bead, I'm going to rotate it over so I can get down through that first one and down through my band. And then when I pull that tightly, that's just going to fill in that little gap and pull it in really beautifully. I think these round crystals look gorgeous. Now I sit it, when I pull this tightly, I sit it so that my band almost disappears behind my crystals. If you wanted it really tight, so you could sit your, see your seed beads around it like that, I would add in one more seed bead. I like it so that when I'm wearing it, you can't actually see the seed beads. Let me just pop this on, hopefully the camera isn't too close. You can't actually see the seed beads around. So it looks a lot more like you have um, a solid band and a crystal set into the top, okay? And of course, depending on the size of the crystal you're using. So I'm going to sit it so that, and I'll pull this tightly now. I'm going to sit it so that my seed beads almost disappear behind them. And you'll see it when I pop it on at the end. It just gives it um, a really nice finish. And now we're ready to finish our band. Plus also, if you don't have it sitting too tightly, it's going to give you that maneuverability to flip your crystal around. Okay, and you can see if I hold that away, you're just going to get a lovely band around the outside. Okay, so, goodness me, lots of you. 
Christine is saying she can't wait to have a go at this ring. Oh, I'm so pleased. Do also join the Totally Handmade Facebook group because I would love to see your photos. You can share your photos in there. I would love to see everybody's adaptation of this because I think they're all going to be slightly different. So we're now ready to finish our band on the other side. So again, I'm just exiting from the left, picking up two beads, coming down one bead to connect on my new beads. I'm going to flip that around so that I can see my beads. My thread will cross over and I'm going to go up two. And this will start neatening it up, neatening the beads and giving me that lovely tension and the beaded band. Two beads down the far side, pulling that in, sitting them nice and flush. Now, you don't have to cross over. You could cross through these two. You don't have to flip it over. I just find it easier because a lot of the time um, where you've added a new bead, they're not quite attached yet. Um, so when you start putting your needle through them, now, can you see here my tension's gone a little bit off? So just make sure that you're pulling it really nice and tightly. When I cross over and I pull these through, it'll pull that in nice and tightly. Slide them down, hold the beads, pull the thread. Okay, and then this is where you can get carried away. <laughs> you want to make sure that you keep on measuring up the size of your band. So I'm going to move out a little bit more so I can show you my finger. Popping this in. So popping it on your finger, the band will come around. So can you see here, I've probably got, oh, I don't know, four more beads to add in, four more rows. So you want to make sure as well that it's going to fit over your knuckle. So the largest part of your finger. Um, I might actually wear this one because I think it'll look really nice with all of my other beads. I might wear it on my middle finger, but just keep on measuring them up, okay? Sorry, I don't know if you can hear my dog having a very noisy drink in the kitchen in the background. <laughs> they might come in and disturb us in a minute. I've been going a little while. They're gonna be getting restless. Okay, so we're gonna pull it through, I think four, about four more sets, and we will have a completed band and then I'll show you how to attach them on together. Um, Margaret says always watch you on CNC. These videos are amazing as we get to see a perfect tutorial. Thank you both so much. Margaret you're welcome. Yes so for those of you who don't know we do um, create and craft TV. So we do jewellery shows so that you can make your own jewellery. We've got lots of different kits available. And I'm going to be on Creative Craft TV this Wednesday at nine o'clock, um, nine in the morning. Obviously, because it is Selly Telly, you don't always get to do complete demonstrations. I mean, on here, we sit for about an hour in these mornings, don't we? Sometimes less, about half an hour. The shows on telly are only 45 minutes. So what we always try to do is enough of a demonstration so that you can see the technique. I mean, with this, it's been a lot of pattern repeat, hasn't it, for the bands? So... I like to always give you a little bit of enough of a demonstration so that you can see the pattern and you can decide whether it's something that you think you could do, um, but you only ever get a couple of minutes. So these Facebook Lives have been fantastic because we can sit and make something in its entirety, which is normally quite rare to show you, isn't it? Couple more rows and our ring is done. So again, do make sure that if you want to save this, we've got our coin crystals on offer today. You can get the whole jewellery set for just £5. Now this ring is an extra pattern and project that I have made with the coin crystals. So if you share this video, the video will pop onto your own homepage on Facebook. It's almost like bookmarking it because I don't I don't know how savvy you all are. I'm not great on Facebook, to be honest. You can uh, save videos and bookmark them, but I don't ever know how to go and find them again. So you can scroll through our page, but you can also make sure that by sharing it, it will be on your homepage and you can find it really easily. Okay, so I think one more set of beads and we are going to be finished. So what I'm going to do is pick up my final two seed beads and I want to attach it to the other side of my band. So it is exactly the same technique. I'm picking up two beads and I'm going to cross over through 
the same side. So can you see my thread is exiting from the left? I'm going to cross over. Yeah, I'm going to add on two extra sets. So I'm going to cross over through exactly the same. And can you see, this is probably the easiest way to show you. Let's get this thread this is my tail thread, so that's attached to my spool still. Can you see now, I've added on two beads and I've left a little gap because now I can cross over. So now I'm connecting the two bands. I'm going to pick up two more beads because it's going to fill this gap and I'm gonna come through the other side. But these beads now don't have the thread running parallel through them. I'm horizontally attached, but we don't have the one running parallel through. And this is where we can reinforce it. So I'm going to go cross over. So I've got no thread crossing over here. Um, it's probably quite hard for you to see because I've used um, a matching thread. But when you do this at home, um, you will be able to see which beads actually have crossing over threads because this is our reinforcement. So you can see I've got if I pull this over, I've got one crossing over here, but I don't have one crossing over here. So I'm going to go up through two because I don't have one crossing over here either. And all I'm going to do is weave in each time, moving down to the beads that don't have a horizontal thread across them and pulling it in. Now, if you would like to reinforce this even more, so if you know you are a little bit... If you know you're a little bit rough with your jewellery, so not too delicate, what you can do is actually run through this entire band again, okay? And it will also neaten it up. And a lot of the time you do this with like a flat herringbone. So I'm going to go up to the top here, pull my thread through, because I've still got lots of thread available, and I'm pulling this really nice and tightly. And what you'll see is that because I'm running um, all the way through my beads again, it's just giving me a nice, neat and precise thread path, pulling it through, and it's also going to reinforce this band. Because rings, obviously, are going to have quite a lot of stress. You're going to use your hands a lot. You're going to be carrying things. You want it to be nice and secure. So I'm just going to go all the way. And you can actually tell where you've reinforced your band already. You will feel the difference between a band that hasn't been reinforced and one that has. So I'm just going to cross over again. Um, it gives it actually um, some great rigidity. Um, when I showed Kitty this one, she actually thought I'd put it on wire because it was really rigid and solid, which out of a band you want. Um, but it's just reinforced so many times. Can you see now I've got a fantastic band. It's really solid. OK, um, and then we're just going to uh, finish off our threads. So this is still attached to my spool. OK, this is my working thread. And we're going to finish them off with um, a couple of knots and we'll be able to disappear these into our work. So I want to keep going in my thread path. So for this one, I'm working up the way. So let's go through a few more beads and then I'm going to create a half hitch knot. Can see those beads weren't quite in line so I just want to go through those again perfect okay half hitch knot so I'm not going to take any beads I am purely just going to go underneath my thread path okay so my thread here I'm just going to go through the very middle so it's coming out in the middle of my band I'm going to pull that through until I leave a little loop and you can see my tail is in the way so I'm just going to pull that tail through move my needle up a little bit more I'm going, then going to pass over my work and through this loop. And what that will do is give me a knot. Make sure you don't catch a, capture any of your seed beads in the way. And then I'm going to move away from my knot. Just a few beads and I'm going to do the same thing again. You want to move away from your knot each time. Like so. Because if... Oh dear. Sorry, we have a delivery. <laughs> My goodness me this is the madness I live with guys <laughs> post deliveries no one comes to our house without us knowing about it 
Okay, I think John's sorting them out for me. I've got both dogs here today. Um, we have a working dog. He's a Belgian Malinois and a cockapoo. Um, so John and the dog have a week off at a time. They're away for a week and then they're home for a week. Um, and when we've got them both, you definitely know about it. <laughs> okay, so I'm now just going to cut my thread from my spool. So you'll see we did two half hitch knots on the other strand. Oh man, I hate threading a needle live. Oh, is Lucy watching? We had Lucy on the videos yesterday who was struggling to um who was struggling to actually um thread her needle. So I gave a couple of tips in yesterday's video. Lucy, I hope you managed to get threaded so that you could finish your project. Okay, so I'm coming away from where my thread is attached and we'll just do the same thing again. We will add a couple of half hitch knots. So just make sure that the bead you're exiting from, so I'm not crossing over and creating a knot on the other side, I'm, I'm staying on my working side. Underneath, pull that through so you've got your loop, bring that needle through your loop and just make sure that you are tying your knot in the same place uh, as the uh, crossover so you're not crossing over any beads because you will have a visible thread move away a few beads like so and do another one so underneath I think these these are the gold gold lined black diamond seed beads and I don't know if you can see it on the video but they do have a slight black tinge to them they are absolutely beautiful um, and I think they go really well with this black crystal so again pulling that through I've got my tail stuck in there so I'm just gonna work out which one he is there we go pull that through Good grief, I have nearly 300 of you watching. We're up to 283 people. Good morning, everyone. I hope you are safe and well. I hope you're enjoying these videos. Um, when Kitty and I started about six weeks ago, I think we had about 30 of you. So I love that you are sharing the videos, you're involving your friends, um, your little beading crafting communities, and hopefully we are getting you through the days with a little bit of craft. Okay, so. So I am going to finish this off now. You'll see I did it when the dogs were barking, so you couldn't hear me. But always pull your thread up, push down with your scissors. Okay, and that way you'll get a perfect finish. And there is our completed ring. So I'm going to pop that on. Oh no, I made it for my middle finger, didn't I? But it still looks great. You can wear it either way. So you've got that flip I can't really flip it when it's on my finger because it needs to rotate round. I've got two rings for the price of one because I have that beautiful coin finish. So you could have a really blingy side like so. This is, um, I've made it for my middle finger, haven't I? So it's a little bit... Oh, excellent. Gemma's saying she saved the video all ready to make for next time. Fantastic. So you can save the video, you can share it onto your pages, and that's like bookmarking it, so you'll be able to find it next time. So you can see I've got a really blingy ring, or I can turn that around and have the darker side. With our coin crystals, we have um, a fantastic um, kit that will show you how to make your necklaces and earrings. And um, this is my little take. So you, all you will need to do, your coin kits, your coin crystal kits are on offer today for just five pounds. The link is in the description of the video. This is my little take on adding another accessory to your set so you can make a beautiful ring. I would love to see what rings you are going to make with them as well. Look at that sparkle. Um, and obviously you can do it with any shape. It doesn't just have to be coins. We also have hexagon ones. There's so many different things that you can do, but hopefully, it's shown you how to make beautiful rings I've done it in a gold so it kind of matches some of my other rings as well and um, of course like I said earlier if you do have hypersensitive skin there's no metal findings in this so there's no if you're not great with costume jewelry and your mixed metals sorry you're getting um, glare from the window there aren't you um because there's no metal in there at all it's going to be fantastic for anybody who has hypersensitive skin it means that you can actually wear your rings because all it is is your crystal or your feature bead and your seed beads so it's a great way to be able to hopefully if you know anyone who can't wear them um give the gift of a bit of jewelry and a bit of bling as well okay so 
Today has been phenomenally busy. I am so glad you like it. Thank you so much. There's nothing nicer than when you design something and you share it with people that they love it. So that is um, a real a real privilege. Thank you very much. I'm glad you have enjoyed it. Um, Sarah, do you have the other colours to show us, please? Yes, I do. So I was using... I'm not sure what they're called. I don't know the, the exact names. I do know there's one called Mermaid Pink and I haven't got it here because it is fabulous. Um, these are some of the other colours. So this is uh, sort of the greeny turquoise. On one side, you have the beautiful green turquoise finish. On the other side, you have the AB finish. I have to make one of these. This is just fabulous. Um, you also have um, the beautiful blue, again, double-sided. You will see them. I've put the link into the video. Pop onto the Totally Beads page. Mind you, I love this one as well. There's no point saying I love them because I love all of them. They're all fabulous. A gold blue finish. Sorry, wobbly camera. You have the Crystal AB as well. So this is going to look like a huge big rock on your finger. That's going to look fantastic. Um, if you pop onto the website, you will see all of the sets. And we do have other crystals as well. You've got the beautiful peachy gold. And then there is a really nice light blue as well. If any of you have been making videos, um, projects from the previous videos, I made this one for mum. This was when we did the weaving with fire polish. And I think that would be a beautiful ring to go with it, wouldn't it? So, Mum, if you're still watching, I'll make you a ring as well. Mum is going to have a whole new jewellery collection by the end of isolation when I get to see her. She's going <laughs> she's to have so many different bits and pieces. Now, tomorrow, I am with you again at 10 o'clock. So, I am going to show you how to make adjustable memory wire bangles. Um, oh, Camille says, thanks again, Sarah. Enjoy the time with John and the dogs. Thank you so much. I actually gave myself a complete day off yesterday. I did my video in the morning and I didn't touch or look at work for the whole day. So I feel really fantastically rested today. It's my first proper, proper day off, probably since this started, to be honest with you, about six weeks. Um, and I feel good for it. So this, uh, today now I need to finish off some orchids. I've got beaded orchids on telly this week. Um, I've got a few more makes to do for other bits and pieces. Now, memory wire. Memory wire is going to be the feature of tomorrow. Now it's a solid wire. Let me show you, for those of you who are new, because I know there's a lot of you, and some, some people are saying, I don't know all the jargon, I don't know what stuff is. This is memory wire. It's like a slinky. Do you remember we used to chuck them down the stairs as kids? <laughs> so 0 0.8 millimetre memory wire. What you would normally do is make bracelets out of them that wrap around your wrist, okay? Um, which is lovely. You can make lots of different bangles. But what I like to do is have single bangles, okay? And you can wear a stack of them all at once. But with these, they are adjustable. So it's going to fit anybody because it needs to go through the widest part of your wrist and then when you wear it so a lot of the time if you make ones oh, I've got this one stuck now if you make bangles you can't get them on your wrist and then when you do if it has to be big enough to get over here it's huge when it's on your wrist so what I did was made these adjustable so as you're taking them on and off it will adjust to the size of your knuckles and then still sit great on your wrist so you can wear a load of them. So we're just going to use leftover beads tomorrow. Uh, jump rings, 0.8 millimetre memory wire and head pins. So that we can make these beautiful stacks of bracelets and I'm going to add charms onto them as well. So that is tomorrow, tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock. That will be Tuesday. Today's Monday, isn't it? So Tuesday, tomorrow. Um, lovely. Everyone's saying they love memory wire. That's so great. Join me tomorrow for that. That'll be perfect. Um, and then on Wednesday, because I'm going to be at the telly, um, what do I have on on Wednesday? Um, I've got some amazing bundles from Kitty and Totally Beads. Um, I also have my um, French beaded orchids. So um, I'm going to be making orchids amazing outer seed beads um i don't have one. Oh, i do have one i'm not sure if you'll see out of my window mm, no you can't the glare is too much i've got a little purple one here i've been working on beaded orchids 
It's a little bit wonky because the dog's knocked it off yesterday. I need to I need to move it around. That will be telly on Wednesday. So that will be um, nine o'clock on Creating Craft TV. And then you can pop onto the Facebook page and join Kitty. She will be here at 10. Thank you so much for your company this morning. I have absolutely loved working with you all and making our blingy rings. Um, do make sure that you pop into the Totally Handmade Facebook group because you can share all of your pictures. I would love to see them. Um, what I am working on, and actually if any of you um, follow my Sarah Millsop Facebook page and you have made any of the projects that we have done in isolation, I want to do a montage um, of all of the pieces that you have made following mine and Kitty's tutorials. Um, if you tag us in your pictures or you private message them, um, that would give me permission to share them. Um, so if you make them public knowledge for myself or for Kitty, tag me in them, private message them through. You can find my Sarah Millsop page, find them on the Totally Beads page. And I would like to do a montage of all of the pictures that everyone has been creating. Um, it would be really lovely and I think it would be a nice thing to do um, to keep us all motivated and to know that we're all in it together as well. So um, yeah, send me your pictures. I'll mention it again tomorrow as well. I'm going to get working on it. I've already had quite a few come through and I've asked if I've got their permission to share them, which they've given me, which is lovely. Um, so I'll message a few of you if you've shared them previously as well, just to make sure you're okay with me sharing your pickies. Um, thank you so much. I will see you all tomorrow. I am off to prep everything for shows. I've got about six TV shows this week across the whole week. So it's going to be a busy old week. Happy Monday to you all. Stay safe. Stay home. Keep looking after each other. You are doing a fantastic job of interacting with everyone here. I hope it gives you all a little giggle and a smile in the morning. Um, take care of yourselves and I will see you tomorrow morning. Thank you. Love to you all.